Hi, James Bentley with GE Aviation's Customer Technical Education Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. And for today's GENX Maintenance Minute, I'd like to look at how we can prevent damage to the main fuel pump during the removal and installation process. So we provided some best practices uh, that can help mitigate the chances of damaging the spline shaft, the accessory gearbox, drive pad, and the transfer tube assemblies on the main fuel pump. All right, for the main fuel pump removal and installation procedure, we do want to use the core motoring drive pad. Um, as you can see, I've already got a half inch drive installed um, and ready to go. And what we're going to do here is just very slow rotations as we back the main fuel pump off of the drive pad, as well as install the main fuel pump onto the drive pad. And this just helps align the spline shaft teeth. So very important to use this, uh, makes the process a lot easier. In addition to the core motoring drive pad, we're going to use the LRU lifting fixture. Um, this is a really good tool, helps control the pitch and the roll of the component. Um, definitely can help you prevent damage to the main fuel pump spline as well as to the drive pad area. As you can see, I've already basically prepped the main fuel pump for removal. Uh, we've disconnected the connectors um, and removed the bracket assembly from the lower end of the main fuel pump. Um, so what we're going to do is prep the main fuel pump for removal. Uh, on the main fuel pump, there are two jack screw locations and we definitely want to use those to help unseat the main fuel pump from the drive pad. Uh, we want to avoid trying to shimmy the main fuel pump back and forth in order to disengage it because you can cause damage to the spline shaft on the main fuel pump as well as the drive pad. So we're going to utilize the jack screws. Uh, there are two jack screw locations on the main fuel pump, one on the outboard side, and then there is one 180 degrees opposite on the inboard side. That one is harder to get to. Uh, it does take a little work to get that one installed, but definitely uh, something we want to utilize. So wind those down until you feel them making contact with the accessory gearbox. Then we'll go ahead and install the other jack screw. Okay, now you can see I have my jack screw installed, also one on the inboard side. And you'll notice that I have gone ahead and removed the nuts for the main fuel pump studs except for one, that's just to keep the main fuel pump uh, engaged to the drive pad. So the next step is we're gonna go ahead and install our, our adapter for the LRU lifting fixture. The main fuel pump has threaded inserts that accept that adapter. We'll go ahead and install that and get ready to run the LRU fixture up to the component. Okay, you can see we have our adapter pad for the main fuel pump. So we can use the LRU lifting fixture. And I'm just snugging these down into the threaded inserts on the main fuel pump. And then we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, now that we've got the uh, LRU jacking fixture adapter installed and tightened down to the main fuel pump, you can see I'm running the LRU fixture up to the adapter. We'll go ahead and get that pinned. All right, now we're pinned and ready to go. So now we can go ahead and remove that last nut from the main fuel pump, and we'll begin backing off the main fuel pump from the drive pad. Okay, before I even start utilizing the jack screws to back the main fuel pump off the drive pad, I do like to give the uh, core motoring turning pad just a few small rotations in direction of operation. And then utilizing those jack screws, we're going to very slowly, just a few turns at a time, alternating between inboard and outboard. And you should see the main fuel pump separating from the drive pad. 
So again, just a few turns and alternate between inboard and outboard to make sure the main fuel pump comes off nice and easily. Now, once you're able to turn the jack screws by hand, that's a pretty good indication that uh, you're gonna be able to move the main fuel pump off of the drive pad. So what we're going to do is very slowly remove the pump from the drive pad. Then we can go ahead and lower that down. And get ready for the installation. Okay, now uh, prepping the pump for installation, whether you're reinstalling the pump that was previously removed or installing a new pump, just keep in mind that the transfer tubes will come with the new main fuel pump. However, you do need to install the backup O-rings and the primary O-rings onto those transfer tubes. Check your offsetting and um, your scarf cuts, make sure that they're not right on top of each other. We'll lubricate these with engine oil. As well as the O-ring for the gear drive, which is this area right here. and the spline shaft o-ring and i left the jack screws in just so you can see their two locations i'm going to go ahead and remove those and get the pump ready for installation okay you can see i've raised the main fuel pump back up to uh, where we're going to install it onto the drive pad uh, remember that your LRU lifting fixture enables you to control the pitch and roll so you can get everything lined up correctly. So once you feel that you have everything lined up correctly, you can go ahead and slowly engage. But you, you'll notice that I hit a stop there. And that's because the, the splines on the actual accessory gearbox are not lined up with the spline shaft on the main fuel pump. So that's where we're going to utilize the core motoring tool. And you can see by just a few small rotations, we were able to push the spline into the drive pad. Um, I don't really want you to wiggle this and try to completely seat the main fuel pump onto the drive pad. I just want you to push as far forward as you can to expose threads on the studs because we can actually use the hardware to draw this component into the drive pad now. Okay, now that I removed the adapter from the main fuel pump, uh, we're ready to go ahead and draw the main fuel pump into the drive pad and reseat it. What I've done is I've installed a nut on the outboard side. I've also put one on the inboard side. Very much the same way we did the jack screws, just one turn at a time we're going to slowly draw the main fuel pump back and fully seat it to the accessory gearbox drive pad. Okay, after tightening down the nuts um, in that alternating sequence, you can see we are fully seated now. Um, what that has allowed us to do is prevent damage to the spline shaft on the main fuel pump as well as the transfer tube assemblies and the drive pad. So being slow and methodical during this process can really alleviate the headaches of you know damaging components during install. All right now that the main fuel pump is completely seated you're free to go ahead and install the remaining five nuts onto the accessory gearbox mounting studs and then finish the installation process 
and then perform any applicable engine um, tests as required by the AMM. All right, that's going to be it for the GENX main fuel pump removal and installation uh, maintenance minute. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And from everybody here at GE Aviation, we just want to thank you for all that you're doing in maintaining the GENX powered fleet. Until next time.